This method can get you anywhere from 2 to 16,000 experience for the engineering skill tree every 2 minutes when working properly. And I mainly focused this guide for the engineering skill tree and using tech weapons, but I'm pretty sure you could use this technique to quickly level any combat based skill tree. I'm first going to go over the basic loop and locations to level up your skills, then I'll go over what you'll need to do it at all and what can make it go faster. There's two locations, the first is better if it works, but if it doesn't work for you there is a second location to try that also gives a pretty good amount of XP and works more consistently. Both will require a player level of around 20 to 25, but higher levels are always better. Okay, the first location and the one I had the best success with will only have a chance of working after completing all of Panam's side missions. Head to the fast travel point near the Wraith camp in the Badlands, call your bike and go to the camp. You have to shoot enemies through walls with a tech weapon for it to give engineering skill tree XP. I really like using the forklift for the initial enemies and then using the concrete walls, it's pretty easy to get enemies behind walls at this location. Once you've cleared the enemies and you're no longer in combat, use the bike to return to the fast travel station and fast travel back to the same station. This should refresh all enemies in the camp without any loading screens and you won't even have to resummon your bike, so you can quickly get back to the enemies. Assuming enemies are respawning, just rinse and repeat this cycle to stack up the XP. You can get anywhere from 2000 to 16000 XP for the engineering tree each cycle and the cycle takes about 2 minutes or less. By the way, you might get a little bit less XP if you're a lower level. If you're using the DB2 Satari Tech Shock, and you'll also be getting a ton of XP for the Annihilation skill tree, and I think in general you'll get a ton of XP for the associated skill tree of whatever type of tech weapon you choose. You'll also get just as much XP if you're doing this on easy as if you were doing it on very hard, so definitely do it on easy. Now I know someone who completed Panam's storyline and still wasn't able to get the enemies to respond quickly like I was at the first location, so I'm not entirely sure what exact conditions need to be met in order for enemy respawns at the Wraith camp to work like it did for me. I sincerely hope it works for all of you, but if it doesn't, here is another spot I found, the Sunshine Motel, where enemies respond quickly for both me and another person that tested it out. You'll probably have to complete the side gig here before it starts working correctly, and at this location, you have to fast travel to a different location first and then back again in order for enemies to respawn, meaning you will need to deal with some loading screens. I was still able to get between 5000 and 12000 engineering skill tree XP per cycle using the DB2 tech shotgun, so this is definitely a nice plan B to fall back on if the first location doesn't work for you all like it worked for me. So here's a quick summary of what you'll need to do this. For the engineering tree you'll need a good tech weapon. I seem to get a lot of skill XP when using an epic DB2 Satara shotgun that hits like a truck. I'll show a location on the map where you can find two purple DB2 Satara shotguns at the site of a cyber psycho attack. When doing this method on easy difficulty with a tech shotgun and really making sure to land point blank headshots through walls. I was getting anywhere from 12,000 to 16,000 XP towards engineering in a single cycle, so I'd say the tech shock on an easy is just the way to go. I'd bet the precision rifle works pretty well too, if you land all headshots with it, I think the most important factor is that the charge weapons you use deals a lot of damage in a single shot, and that each shot shoots multiple projectiles. Again, you'll also need to be hitting enemies through walls. You're also going to need your tech ability attribute at the level you want to get your engineering skill tree to. So if you want to get your engineering skill tree progression to level 20, you'll need a tech ability attribute level at level 20 as well. This is the way that all skill tree progressions work, they are limited by the level of the attribute they're found under. And then to make this whole process go faster, you'll want to get the perks associated with the tech weapons in the engineering skill tree, like the screw all walls perk. That's not the precise name of the perk, but I think you all know which one I'm referring to. You'll also want a good ocular system implant and the threat detector mod for it. You can get these from Doc Vic once you pay him back, and you can also use the ping quick hack if you prefer. The threat detector cyberware mod will highlight enemies that have detected you for a short time, allowing you to see them through walls. And then if the first location is working for you, it's really nice to have a motorcycle to speed things up going back and forth from the fast travel station. If you want to get the motorcycle I have for free, I have a video showing where and how to get it, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description of this video. Finally, and most of you will probably have this without knowing it, is crafting specs and enough materials to craft the ammo that your tech weapon uses, so that you don't need to go to a gun shop to buy more ammo. 
One potential issue you might run into at either location is that the weapons and loot will begin to pile up as you keep refreshing the enemy spawns, and this will make the game run slower and push your game save files towards that 8 megabyte limit that can corrupt your save files. I found that fast traveling far away will make most of the loot from bodies disappear, but it doesn't seem to have the same effect on weapons, those seem to just remain on the ground. I've also heard that you can sell items to drop points instead of breaking them down or selling them to vendors and that'll somehow reduce the increase to your file size. So what I did was use the fast travel trick to get rid of excessive bodies and loot buildup and then when weapons built up to be too much, I looted all of them, rode my bike to the fast travel station, then fast traveled to a place with a drop point nearby selling all of my weapons and waiting 24 hours whenever the drop point ran out of money. I only had to go sell weapons at a drop point a few times between engineering level 12 and 20. After getting to engineering level 20, I was still able to save and load saves just fine and the game ran fine too. I play on Xbox Series X in case you're wondering, and I'm not 100% sure that this will prevent any issues with save file size, so just be sure to make a save file before you start doing this just in case. I was also quick saving in between each cycle just in case anything bugged out or the game crashed, but I never had any issues. But yeah, this is not an easy skill tree to level up. It's probably one of the harder ones and I found this method to be the quickest and most reliable way to level it up. And also you can level up some other weapon skill trees at the same time and get a decent amount of cash from selling the weapons that enemies drop to drop points. If you are at level 50 like me and just want to max out your engineering tree, this is a great way to go about it. And yes, I was able to max out my engineering skill level. It took a few hours to get it from level 12 to level 20 with this method, which was a long time, but much less time than it would have taken otherwise. And with that last perk, my legendary Quasar Revolver deals around 1.2 million damage headshots on very hard. Who knows if and when CD Projekt Red will fix both locations so that enemies don't respawn as quickly. I'd say to take advantage of it if and while you can, as it is unreasonably difficult to level up some of these skills trees through normal gameplay. I hope this guide helped you all. If you want to see more great content, I'll leave a few good videos at the end of this video, or you can head over to my channel where all those videos are hanging out. And if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat. Her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day. If you're here today, have a great Tuesday and happy holidays. And as always, thanks for watching.